Welcome inside episode 710 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains and the Ottawa Senators are heading out on the road after a 3-0 shutout loss to the Nashville Predators. And we make our top 10 Sens prospect list to start off the year 2023. Time for you to get mad at our list. And how does it compare to last April's list? All that's coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen on this Tuesday, January 10th. The show is free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube, where the best way you can help the show grow is to like every video by clicking the thumbs up and subscribing to the Locked On Senators channel. Be a friend, tell a friend, the road to 5,000 continues pilsey we used to have colin white and thomas shabbat as birthday brothers on the same team today it's tyler clevin and carson latimer's birthday two guests of this show and it rolls perfectly into our sends prospect countdown which is coming up later in the show but i'd like you to put lipstick on last night's three nothing victory what'd you see in that game <laughs> i mean Very opposite to the Seattle Kraken, this was a game that the Ottawa Senators were actually in the whole time and could have won. When you look at advanced analytics, they started off the game with a great first period, although they're down 2-0. The Sens were winning 0-2 at the end of that period, Ross. I thought maybe they could come back, but then the National Predators, they're such a veteran defensive structured team that when they're up 2-0, they're able just to shut the door and... Honestly, I know DJ Smith gets a hard time for saying we just face a hot goalie last night. But when you're talking about UC Soros, who had a spectacular game up against the Hurricanes, I believe it was like 64 saves or something. Shut and th- Yeah, and then he comes in and shuts out the Ottawa Senators as well. So UC Soros, he was the main story of this game as... Like, I was trying to look at natural statric Ross and be like, okay, where did this team break down? But... Through the analytics, they didn't. They dominated in Corsi-wise. All the defense pairs looked good. It was just a couple bad mistakes by Eric Brandstrom and Thomas Shabbat that ultimately led to goals for the Preds, and the Sens weren't able to beat Saros. That's uh, that's all the lipstick I can put on here because that's essentially how this one went. Do you miss playing against backup goalies? Uh, yeah, I do. Although Lankinen is has pretty good numbers too. So I don't think facing him would have changed a whole lot. But UC Saros was on fire last night. Hockey Reference, a site we use and would recommend to anybody for any sort of numbers you need. Their Twitter account posted this morning, 102 saves over his last two games. UC Saros becomes only the second goalie since 1996 to record at least 100 saves over a two-game span. This guy's one of the best goalies in the league. He's one of the smaller goalies, and I love that he's kind of putting them back on the map as a guy who can kick out saves. He looked great. Now, to me, the turning point in this game, and I'm not arguing the call. It was offside. But Ottawa goes down 2 nothing, and then Brady Kachuk gets one right back. You're like, okay. It was almost like the Kraken game where they, where they go down by a yep. score that really gets you disappointed, and then they come back and score, and you're right back into it. I felt that way about the goal, but not only was Brady offside, Tim Stutzel was also offside on the entry. So two negatives don't make a positive in this situation. Um, play was offside. And then Matthew Shane went offside. The joke being he he's the reason yeah. why the offside review exists. Um, I thought it would dis- undo the curse, but it did not. And the Ottawa Senators fall 3-0. Pilsey and Jack Richardson had all you need to know of this game in the postcast. We want to move on, though because the Senators are off for the next couple days. So we thought, what better way than to reset, start the new year with who are the list of top 10 Sens prospects right now? Before we get to that list, Pilsy, I'm pulling up, if you're watching on YouTube, our last list that we did. 
from last April. So this was taking into account a lot of what we saw from last year's season and the the reputation that some of these players already had. Graduated from that list. We had Jake Sanderson number one. Credit to us, Pilsy. That looks pretty good. We did it. We did it. We had Shane Pinto at number two. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. Um, And we had Philip Gustafson at number six, who is no longer a member of the organization. I will tell you, we've got some big movers, though, from what we had. Our list, if you're just listening in the car, wherever you listen to your podcast, Ridley Gregg was number three, Lassie Thompson at four, Tyler Boucher at number five, uh, Gustafson at six, JBD at seven, Igor Sokolov at eight, Roby Jarventi at nine, Tyler Clevin at number 10. Our honorable mentions were Mad Sogard, Zach Ostapchuk, and Angus Crookshank. Again, that is from last April. So how does it compare to now? That's all coming up on the Locked On Senators podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at betonline.net. Guys, the NFL playoffs are set. There's a lot of wild matchups, so the gambling weekends are going to be very interesting. And if you're going to get some action in on that, you got to head over to betonline.net. It's the trusted online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network, and for a good reason. They got all the latest odds, news, scores, updates, whatever you need, you can find it there. And it's not just football, guys. You can bet on hockey, basketball. The baseball offseason is heating up. There's still lots of big moves to be made. Golf, boxing, UFC, whatever you like, find it at betonline.net. Guys, it's where the game starts, betonline.net. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. You're among friends at the Glebe Central Pub. Head over there at 779 Bank Street. Make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. Not only do they have daily drink specials, not only do they have an amazing atmosphere, not only are they centrally located and a perfect spot to either pass by or make to, to spend an entire night, but they also love the Senators just as much as you. The games will always be on the TVs at the Glebe Central Pub. And not only that, on certain occasions, they have a shuttle that goes to and from the CTC for $15. So head to the website, GlebeCentralPub.com, and find out when that shuttle is going to run. And soon, we will be at the Glebe Central Pub. Stay tuned for that announcement coming up later on. But for now, we just want to send you there. Make sure that you tell friends, bring friends, head over to the Glebe Central Pub. It's in the heart of the Bank Street. Good people, good friends, and tasty drinks. Find them at 779 Bank Street and make sure you tell them that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, Pelsey. The 2023 first edition of the Locked On Senators top Woo. prospects for the Ottawa Sens starts now. All right. So the last time we did this was April. We had our list. We checked it twice. And came, who came in at number one? Who else? But Jake Sanderson. So credit to us. We absolutely nailed that one. Wow. Just a couple scouts, eh? You and I. <laughs> so, uh, Jake Sanderson was at number one. Shane Pinto was at number two, followed by Ridley Gregg, Lassie Thompson, Tyler Boucher, Philip Gustafson, Jacob Bernard Docker, Igor Sokolov, Roby Jarventi, and Tyler Clevin. The honorable mentions were Mad Sogard, Zach Ostapchuk, and Angus Crookshank. So, three players are no longer on this list. Sanderson and Pinto have graduated. Philip Gustafson plays for the Minnesota Wild. However, the rest have all been reorganized. I don't know if there's more than two guys who are in their current spot still from where they were last April. If you want a somewhat updated version of the top 10 list, Sense Prospects joined us for a YouTube exclusive behind the blog segment this summer where he got into all that. Before we get into the honorable mentions, Pilsy, what's your overall impression of this Senators prospect pool? Well, it certainly changed a lot this year because we have major graduates. And you know what? You might look at this prospect pool and be like, wow, this is not the Senators prospect pool of a couple of years ago. Good. You want those prospects to develop and graduate out of that. And 
you don't always want to be the team with the best prospect pool because that means your NHL team is probably struggling and not where you want them to be. So the Ottawa Senators are in a transition period where they're moving from having prize jewels in their prospect pool to just kind of the extras that uh, haven't made their way to the NHL yet and some of the newer guys from the most recent draft. So it's definitely a lot different, but that's because the Ottawa Senators are changing as a franchise here. The Ottawa Senators also did not have a first round pick this yeah. past draft. That will affect any prospect pool, but give me Alex DeBrinket over a bag of magic beans or mm-hmm. Kevin Karchinski every day of the week. Our honorable mentions, though, were the first two picks for the Ottawa Senators in this past draft and a player whose last season was completely derailed by injury. Take us through why we have Angus Crookshank, Oscar Pedersen, and Philip Nordberg as our honorable mentions. Well, I'd say these guys, it's a lot of unknown, right? Like, sure, Crooker has been in the organization for a while, but he missed so much time. I mean, he missed the entire season last year with injuries, unfortunately. So we're just kind of getting a taste of what he can uh, do at the Belleville level on a more consistent level. And I think he's been pretty good. And especially in the rookie tournament, when I saw him play in Buffalo and uh, before the season got started, he was one of the prospects that shined a lot. He's a guy that has offensive capabilities while also playing a pesky sort of game that opponents hate playing up against him because he forechecks hard. He always battles hard for the stick um, battles along the boards. And he's someone that I think any teammate would love to have on your line. He's a guy that can get you the puck, but also if you dish it to him, he can finish the play too. So I want to see a little more time from Crooker in Belleville. I don't think he's ready to be called up yet. I want to see him dominate in the top six role in the AHL, and I think we could see some big things from him in the future. I'm excited to talk to Troy Mann about Crooker because it feels like just the kind of guy that your team loves to have. He's got 10 goals, 19 points in 34 games this year. The Dash 22 is a little chilly, but I think Belleville has been pretty up and down as an entire team this year on an upswing right now, winning three straight at the time of this recording. But he's kind of a guy you can put in play wherever you need him. He spent time on the top line in Belleville and he spent time in the middle six. In Belleville, whenever a, t- a line needs a jolt, just a perfect F1 type forward, a guy who's going to go in, hound pucks on the four check, not back down from absolutely anyone. Think Parker Kelly, basically, at that level, like a guy who's always got an Energizer bunny motor on him and some sick hands, too. And that showed with the last couple of years he spent in college where he was almost a point per game at the University of New Hampshire and then came in and had what? 10-game point streak, what was it when he started out in Belleville? He had 16 points in the first 19 games. Unfortunately, uh, was only able to play that many up until this year. Oscar Pedersen, of course, showed well at the World Juniors, but when you have a shot, a tool like that, you deserve to have a little bit of respect put on your name. And then he showed that he can add a little bit of a grinder mentality to what his game was this year. Pilsy, we just talked about Philip Nordberg on yesterday's show being moved to the SHL. That'll be a good test for him of where his potential could truly lie. Yeah, with uh, with Pedersen, just quickly, he's someone that we're seeing glimpses of really good offense, and it seems like there's a lot of potential there, but he hasn't quite you know, broken through or anything yet. So that's why he's on the honorable mention, just because it's a lot of unknown and very similar to Nordberg. It's a lot of unknown of what he can do, but now that he's getting a challenge of playing in the SHL as opposed to the Allsvenskan League, I think he's really going to show how ready he is for a bigger role. And potentially, maybe we see him sign an entry-level contract soon and come over to North America. Yeah, since Prospects is reporting that that could be in the works. Would absolutely love that. Uh, I just want to give an honorable mention to our honorable mentions. Stephen Halliday has had a fantastic year with the University of Ohio State, or the Ohio State University. So I just want to give him a mention. We're going to be following up with him a little bit later on this year but let's move to number 10 on our list of sends prospects january 2023 it's victor lodine slick vic the hands are elite the shot is very very good but i worry about um the foot speed maybe a bit of the instincts at the at the nhl level yeah, I mean, his highlights, if you've had a chance to watch any of them, he just scores such great goals. His most recent shootout goal was so smooth and just a classic low Dean play. But 
the thing with me why low Dean's down here is he's already 23 years old he's going to be 24 in june and he doesn't have a whole lot of North American experience. He's got a bunch of uh, experience in the SHL and had a really good season with Tim Rill last year, but I just think he might not have enough runway to burst through and find his scene. He kind of reminds me of a Philip Schlappick with softer hands and uh, a little bit more of a scoring uh, um, opportunity and ability. So, I think Victor Lodine, he's he's not going to move up too much here just because of his age. And I, I'm worried he's not going to get a chance in the NHL. And it, it's not going to end up uh, being a big opportunity for him here. But I, I hope I'm wrong. And he does get a good shot at the NHL and maybe can make an impact. Because he's a fun player. That's for sure. 12, yeah, points, in, 12 points in 15 games, plus two so far this season. Now, 12 penalty minutes in 15 games, too. I uh, would like to see that cut down a little bit with some stick infractions. But after coming over from uh, Sweden last season, he's played 25 total games and has 20 points at the AHL level. I think if he was a 20 or 21-year-old, he'd be much higher on this list. But we're trying to balance here with potential with how ready they are for the NHL. And I just feel he's almost caught in that no man's land at near 24 years old. It's, it's kind of like, okay, what are you as a player at this organization, but fun player, no doubt. And we're going to be looking for more highlight reels of Victor Lodine to come. That brings us to number nine on our list of sends top prospects. And it's Tyler Clevin from the university of North Dakota, the left shot mammoth defenseman was known as a big hitter, a single variable, some would say. But what I've really liked is how he's kind of rounded out his game into being a bit more of an offensive threat at college. Is he ever going to put up 30, 40 points at the NHL level? No, probably not. But it is nice to see he is expanding his role. To me, that just shows that he's a, he's willing to learn and he's able to put what he's able to practice what's preached to him in the coaching office. You know, Brad Barry, a career defensive defenseman, isn't telling Clevin, okay, to be the best at your next level, you have to add the power play to your repertoire. But that's how he's helping his team win right now in North Dakota. Four goals, two game winning goals over his last two games. But to me, it's just the ever growth of his game. I think that he's going to he's gonna play NHL games. There's no question about it. But I think that he's going to be a lot more effective in those NHL games than some wanted to give him credit for. Yeah, and I think it's a really good thing that he went back to North Dakota. I know there was maybe some humming and hawing whether he was going to go pro yet or not. But I think it's really beneficial that he's still there at Nodak. The team wanted him to turn pro. Yeah. I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, because I think now he's getting an expanded role there, like you mentioned. And he's improved every year. If you look at his first year in NODAC, 22 games, 5 goals, 2 assists. Then last year, 38 games, 7 goals, 3 assists. And now this year, he's already passed that uh, number in 20 games, 5 goals, 6 assists for 11 points. But when you're talking about Tyler Clevin, the stat sheet isn't exactly what you're focusing on. He plays a big hard physical game and I think he has the opportunity to be a really good third pair defenseman in the NHL one day and I think next year when he comes to Belleville he's going to be a big part of their top four potentially as soon as this spring Tyler Clevin could turn pro you brought up his stats I'll bring up his 411 kid stands six foot four 200 pounds right now the Fargo North Dakota product as well 21 years old as of today so happy birthday to the K train choo choo. Yeah. Love to see it for Tyler Clevin on a four game point streak. May we add where he has six points in his last four games and get this in his last four games, Pilsy, he's sitting at 17 shots on goal. So put the puck on net kid from the blue line. That's Tyler Clevin coming in at number nine on our list of top sense prospects to number eight. It's rock and Roby Roby Arventi. With the Belleville Sens, the numbers didn't jump off the page in his rookie season last year, but he was also the youngest player in the league as he was an August birthday for the 2020 draft. Where are you at with Roby, who's, I mean, been sidelined most of the year, so tough to get too much of an update. That's the only reason Roby's so low is because he hasn't played a lot, but like you mentioned, he's so young, so the runway is so long, and his potential is enormous. Like when he's playing well, that 
release that he has from the slot, like it's so timely and goalies, they can't read it. By the time they've read that he's shooting, the puck's already off his stick and heading towards the net. So he uses that big frame to get himself open in the slot and all he needs is a playmaker with them. And I believe he can play uh, a really good offensive game. And on the power play, we've seen in Belleville, he can hit that Josh Norris spot from the circle and he can one time and pass goalie. So I, I'm really excited for Roby Arventi. It's just, I want to see him get healthy before he can bump up this uh, list and play more consistent minutes in Belleville. I completely agree. And I think we're entering a new tier. I think that Lodine, Clevin, and the honorable mentions can almost be in one tier. And now, even from like eight to three, I would be willing to listen to any sort of argument. But who are those next players coming up on the list? We'll get to that in a moment. But with Roby Arventi, I just hope he can get back, get healthy, and show a little more consistency. Like, talk about hit or miss. I know they were a few months apart, but the World Juniors just kind of tells the story, right? He was completely invisible in his first World Juniors, even though he was put in a good role. Six games, zero points. Then, in the Summer World Juniors, a year later, has nine points in seven games to lead Finland. Like, it's just so wide, the range of, of probabilities that you're going to get with, with Roby. So, that comes with age. That comes with maturity. And you could hear from his interview with us. Very relaxed guy. A very chill guy. And I think that's going to do him well. But I hope that he can take maybe a piece of the intensity of an Angus Crookshank or a Ridley Gregg, those guys, and kind of add that element to his game. Because I've seen him be physical before, but if he could add a little bit of sandpaper to his game, then when he's not scoring, at least he's not completely invisible, right? There there yeah. needs to be that B game with Roby to push him up that list. That's the thing. He does have a little bit of the Patrick Line style to his game, right? When he's clicking, oh man, look out. He's going to be firing on all cylinders. But when he's not... He can be invisible and even sometimes a bit of a defensive liability. So we want to see some consistency for Roby, that's for sure. We're going to finish this na- nation's spot on our list coming right up. But first, we've got a word from one of our favorite sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Athletic Greens. And Ross, I just finished my AG1 drink this morning as I'm trying to make it a part of my routine because – I'm a simple guy. It's a simple solution to staying healthy or at least trying to get healthier is one scoop of AG1 in your cup of water every morning and you're going to start your day off right because that gives you 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics and more so you can start your day off right. And it supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus and aging. There's so many good benefits and I love that it's lifestyle friendly, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, it's all good for you. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and it still tastes great in my opinion. And tastes good, healthy, check, check, and the price is cheaper than your cold brew habit. If you're getting coffee every day, switch up to getting AG1 so you can have a healthier routine to start your morning. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs on your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Pilsy. The list goes on and on. And my horrible tease aside, we are staying in Finland for our next pick. Coming in at number seven is Lassie Thompson, the right shot defenseman, currently out week to week. Haven't loved the season for Lassie, especially after a real step forward last year where he had 26 points in 44 games in Belleville. Looked decent, if not good, up in Ottawa. But this year, it really does feel like it's been a bit of a step back. 
I would agree, Ross, especially because this year, Lassie Thompson was given the opportunity to take a big step forward with no Eric Brandstrom kind of uh, meddling in the AHL, NHL fringe there. He's been a full-time NHLer. Jacob Bernard Docker has been, for the most part, in the NHL. Then he was injured. He's now back down in Belleville. But Lassie Thompson had an opportunity to be this team's number one guy for a couple weeks there. And he didn't really grab a hold of it like I thought he would. I thought maybe he would pick it up on the power play. We see the Tom bomb going. He's got a big slap shot that I feel like he doesn't utilize enough. And it really seems to me like the potential for Lassie Thompson is more he can be a decent third pair guy in the NHL rather than a top four guy that we kind of had envisioned for him uh, a, a few years ago and when this guy was drafted. The back and forth between him and JBD have been astounding. Like I, yeah, every time we do of. these lists, I feel like they flip flop in my head, the back to back first round picks for Ottawa in 2018 and then 2019 with Lassie. It's just a matter of rounding out kind of everything in his game, right? Like he's an offensive defensive from the standpoint that he has an absolute cannon from the back end and that he can weave up the ice. He's got good zone exit ability and, and can, can enter, can enter the zone uh, as well as anyone in the organization. It's just a matter of when he's off the puck, how are you going to be a good off puck defender and how are you going to be strong enough with your one-on-one battles in the corner and come out with it at the NHL level. I think in the AHL, it's more a consistency thing. And, you know, you're going through as many partners as he had. Hetherington was kind of up and down. They were together a lot last year. I just hope that consistency, once he gets back from this injury, can help round out the two-way side. Because now you're looking at a guy who's 22 years old. Like, Lassie's not that 20-year-old, like, you know, just getting his feet wet in North America. He's been over here. This is now his third season. With yep. the Belleville Sens. So at some point, I think it's time for another step forward after the one we saw last year where we're like, okay, now he's comfortable in North America. We're expecting that trend to continue, but we know that development isn't always linear. So we're hoping for Lassie because right shot defensemen, a lot of times you have to draft them internally. They don't become available as often as some other positions. It's a really you know high leverage position and hopefully Ottawa can have a couple homegrown ones on this list but lassie thompson comes in where he does right ahead of tyler clevin and roby jarventi here on the locked on senators prospect list all right as we move up to number six we've got our lone goalie on the list pilsey it's mad sogard Mad Sogard is so intriguing because anytime you get a goalie that's six foot seven, two hundred pounds, the size alone makes uh, them an interesting prospect. And Mad Sogard does a really good job of using that size and taking up a lot of space. But, however, sometimes he allow he relies too much on the size, and when he needs to kind of slide over to make a play he's too aggressive or he's not on time and he's used to just having good angles and cutting down uh players so that he's covering most of the net but i think he's a very inconsistent goalie we see him have tough stretches right now he's on a great stretch so i think and this was the issue with philip gustison is he never got consistent developmental time I think Mad Sogard is in a position with the goalies all sorted out in the NHL. There's an extra veteran in Belleville in Antoine Bibo. So he has the opportunity to just be the number one guy in Belleville. Don't worry about going up or down. Don't worry about anyone stealing your job. Just focus on consistent play and helping this team win games, steal some games for the Belleville Senators. And I still think there's a lot of potential for Mad Sogard. It's just going to take some patience here. Mad Sogard has a bit of Matt Murray disorder, which is oh, no. good start, bad start, good start, bad start, except he's doing it in twos right now as the last two starts, 923, 967 save percentage. The two starts before that, 846, 879. The two starts before that, 917, 960. Then 885 and 692. Oh, boy. And then 952, 970. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's two great starts, then two bad starts. Two great, two bad. It's And that's why you're in the AHL, and that's why you're learning. 22 as a goalie is a bit different than 22 for Lassie Thompson, right? Yeah. You're, you're looking at a guy who I think really does have another full year after this one to then take the step forward. I think for him, 
2024-25 is when he should be looking to really make an impact at the NHL level. And I think he'll straighten out those highs and lows by then. So I'm looking at it as a growing experience for him. He's six foot seven, so I don't think he needs any more growth in terms of his stature. <laughs> but it's just a matter of the consistency and getting the reps he needs. Last year, 35 starts was the most he's had since he played in the WHL before COVID. So great to see him get those reps. Now he's already at 16. I'm hoping that we see him around that 35, 40 start mark as well this year. I know injuries have taken a toll on a few potential starts for him, but I still have high hopes for Matt Sogar. And that's why he comes in where he does on our list. And just quickly, it, it's important also to take with a grain of salt the AHL uh, spectrum for goalies because there have been some boneyard uh, or graveyard uh, rosters for the Belleville Senators through Mad Sogard's time here. Like there's been some rosters where they're just, there's like three PTOs on this team and maybe the defense core isn't what it looks like. So that's one thing to consider with Mad Sogard's progression here is sometimes it's just Belleville's not able to ice a good team in front of him, And that's going to make it a lot harder to be a goalie. And now we head to junior. Coming in at number five, it's Tyler Boucher from the Ottawa 67s coming off a very successful World Juniors where he had three goals and an assist in six games for Team USA. I still love the potential. I love the physicality. I love his shot in the slot on the power play. I think he can be a great net front guy at the NHL level. I think what we need to see more from Tyler Boucher if he's going to be higher on this list is when the puck is on his stick to be a little more confident in carrying the puck. I feel like when he gets it, if it's in the neutral zone, he's not going to be your guy with smooth zone entries. He's not going to be your guy that's looking for a feather pass or a give and go through the neutral zone. I think that right now, his game around the net is very good, but further out from that home plate area, I think there's room for improvement. Yep, I would agree with that. And Tyler Boucher is a guy that... It's been unfortunate. He hasn't been able to get a good stretch without injuries, moving uh, programs, switching leagues, all these kinds of things. So some consistency will really do him good. And Ross, that description you just gave sounded a lot like Brady Kachuk, right? Like like when you're saying he's not going to be the guy carrying the puck in the zone. He needs to get better at shooting from a distance, not just banging uh, pucks in, in the slot area and in the crease. So I think if, if and when he gets an opportunity to play on the same team as Brady, there's a lot of things Brady can pass down to a player like Tyler Boucher. So I'm excited for that. And yeah, there's a lot of haters in Sens land for Boucher, but I've got high hopes for Tyler. And I think he can play a really effective role when this team is in playoff implications and you're playing a team seven times. You're not going to want to go up against Tyler Boucher in a seven game series, in my opinion. I think we're being very fair with our ranking here at number five. I think that this is where he was last spring, but that was with Jake Sanderson and Shane Pinto ahead of him who have graduated. So I think five is a perfectly reasonable spot for him where he's at right now. Now his team, the Ottawa 67s are loading up at the trade deadline. Now we need to see some extra production. Like point per game, 17 points in 18 games right now, coming back from a dislocated shoulder. When he does, we need to see some production down the stretch because when the games are more important, that's when players like Tyler Boucher are, are should be at their peak. So coming into the playoffs, Ottawa is the fourth-ranked team in the CHL right now. This is a huge spring for Tyler Boucher. I know we said it's a huge year, and I think he's shown flashes for sure. A few multi-goal games in there. But I think down the stretch, we're really going to have to see Tyler Boucher take another step forward. But as for now, he comes in at number five on our top prospects. Coming in at number four, it's the back-to-back gold medalist Woo. at the World Juniors. Zach Ostapchuk takes the biggest leap from an honorable mention last April to number four on our top prospects list. Pilsy, why did the newly minted Winnipeg Ice Forward mm. make this sort of jump? Well, I think you meant to say Winnipeg sends forward uh, in Zach Ostapchuk as he joins the mayor, Carson Latimer, another sends prospect in Winnipeg. But I think having good showings in the World Juniors definitely is a major impact. I mean, this guy showed that 
not only is he got a, a guy that can lead a team in the Vancouver Giants as their captain and putting up big points when he's over there, 29 points in 21 games, but he can also play a role down the lineup and play good defensive structured hockey. And I think the best part of Zach Ostapchuk's game is his relentless forecheck. Like when this puck, if he's on a dump and chase type line, when they dump it in, he is a honey badger out there going for that puck. And I think if you can make him into like a Zach Hyman type where he's on a line with a playmaker and a sniper, he goes in, he gets the puck, gets it to the playmaker, the playmaker finds the sniper, bingo, bango, bongo, you got a nice quick goal there. I think he's going to be a very effective player and it's going to be awesome to see him in such a stack team in Winnipeg. Does he not give you Nick Paul vibes? Yeah, a little bit Nick Paul vibes, that's for sure, because not only is he a guy that's going to grind it out, but if you give him time and space, he's going to score in good opportunities and can put up big goals. So, yeah, I like the Nick Paul comparison. That's a good one. Number 20, gold medalist at the World Juniors, kind of a penalty killer, a guy who I think coaches use as an example in the locker room as a guy who's always playing on the right side of the puck, always having an active stick defensively and able to make plays well, I think more so for a stab check with his feet and being able to outskate opponents. And I'm really excited to be able to have some boots on the ground viewings of a yeah, stab as awesome. Obviously, you know, he's got that leadership in him as well. A guy who was captain of the Vancouver Giants the last year and a half. The Fort Albert, St. Albert, uh, Alberta native, uh, born in Edmonton. 29 points in 21 games this year. And since becoming captain with Vancouver last year, He's up over a point per game still. So great playoffs last year. That's really what kind of put him on the scene. 23 points in 12 games, Bill. Insane, insane. And I think they upset, was it Seattle? They upset an opponent in the first round that they had no business beating. So he was a big No, I don't think it was Seattle. I think it was Everett. Everett, yes, it was. Silver tips, exactly. So great showing from a snap track there. He carried that momentum into the World Juniors in the summer. And now he's a two-time gold medalist. So we're fired up to see a stab Chuck continue this surge. And the second round pick from the 2021 draft is certainly making an impact with what he's been doing this year. All right. Coming in at number three, Pilsy. Woo. It's the shark, Igor Sokolov. I know people were waiting. Where's Igor going to be on this list? He's been in the organization for a number of years now. Well, he's coming in at number three. Because the one knock we had on him going into this season, he's completely fixed. The second round pick from 2020, we wanted more consistency out of him. Pilsy, he's only gone, what, five out of 30 games this year without a point? There's not many games where he hasn't had a point, Ross. And he's been Belleville's offensive uh, leader here for the last couple seasons that he's been here. And... I really think the reason he's so high on this is because he's on the cusp of graduating. I think it wouldn't be crazy for the Ottawa Senators to give him a real opportunity at the end of this year or when training camp comes around next year, he's going to be pushing for a bottom six role in the NHL because he's got the size. No longer is he just a big lumbering guy out there. He's slimmed down. He's able to skate. He's got a better first step than he did in the last couple of years. And he's not just a big guy with the hard shot anymore. He's had incredible playmaking abilities in Belleville this season with 24 assists in 34 games. He leads the team in points as he typically does in Belleville and he's someone that I think he's put the work in he's disciplined in the offseason and I think he's poised to get a chance in the NHL here so Igor Sokolov look out for him and Ross could be a bit of a shootout specialist for the Ottawa Senators as he's perfect four for four in the shootout this year in Belleville I love the way he comes in on his shootout attempts too he almost like has a hop skip and a jump in his in his stride right when he crosses the blue line and then just weaves in and is waiting waiting as a shark does and then pounces and is able to get goals and that's what he's been doing this year 11 goals 35 points in 34 games and people have questions about his foot speed but if you put him on a line with guys who can fly i don't think it's going to be an issue danny heatley was never a great skater but they both have plus plus shots and with that it's more about being smart enough to find the quiet areas in the offensive zone that you can utilize that one-timer. I've said it before on the show. I'll say it again, Pilsy. When Igor Sokolov is going to be at his best in the NHL, 
it is not going to be in a fourth line role playing yeah. with Austin Watson and Mark Castling. No offense to those guys. He needs to play with a centerman who can get the puck on his stick in the right spots. Tim Stutzla would be the number one choice, <laughs> but you look who Timmy's playing with. You're not going to take Giroux off his wing, right? But that style, a guy who can open up space with his speed. How about an stab truck in the next couple yeah. of years? A guy who you can realistically say it's still a third line, right? You're not just going to give a guy top six line, especially if you're trying to be competitive. You want to be able to have depth. But I think he needs a guy who can open up space with his speed and have good vision at the same time. But Igor, man, having plus skills like he does, I think is going to be sooner rather than later before we see him graduate to the NHL level. Igor Sokolov comes in at number three on our list of Senators prospects. He is in his third year with the Belleville Senators, and he is their all-time leading goal scorer. All right, coming in at number two, a guy who I also think should be graduating any minute now, and that's the last one. Here we go. We're just going to go one, two right here. Number two, Jacob Bernard Docker. Pilsy, why is this guy still in the minors? Uh, that's a great question, Ross. I, I think uh, there's a couple of veteran defensemen still in the NHL that are kind of blocking his spot right now. And DJ Smith probably doesn't want too many young defensemen up there. My, that's my best guess because for me, he's ready. And I think he would make the Ottawa Senators a better team than they are right now. Maybe you have Holden as a seventh defenseman plug and play guy and you have JVD playing uh, more regularly here. But I think he just plays such a smart, safe game, which, you know, doesn't show up on TSN top plays in the nights and top 10 highlight reels. But it's something that's going to allow guys like Thomas Shabbat to make those riskier plays because you know JBD is going to be there to mop up any messes and you know he's going to be sticking back and staying responsible. So I think JBD has fully grasped that uh, spot of top right shot defenseman prospect. He's much better, much more ready than Lassie Thompson, in my opinion. And I think he should be in the NHL right now. So do I, Pills. Yeah, I think that he showed really well in his nine-game sample so far this season. He wasn't a kind of player either that's going to get you in bad situations in, in their own zone, right? Since going back to Belleville, plus four in three games, wouldn't you know it, con- contrasts with Belleville's three wins over the span of three games since he's been back in the AHL. He's never going to be a point producer, right? He's never going to be a guy who who's lighting the lamp uh, consistently. But I think if you can see him at his best, it's not going to be seeing him very much. It's going to be not noticing him at all. And that's perfectly fine. But the reason why he's so high on our list is because he doesn't make as many mistakes as some of the other guys down below him. And he's not going to be as Uh, erratic from results being positive to negative he's calm cool steady how about getting in his first nhl fight this year tossing the mitts out um i just love i love what his game brings and i think that there's not a whole lot else he's going to be able to learn in the minors so jacob bernard docker the nodak sends alumni comes in at number two on our sense prospects number one it's ridley greg i mean who else and now he's starting to get his stride in the ahl how long before you see him take the next step to the NHL. I'm going Pilsy Preach's patience with Ridley Gregg here, Ross. I know he's playing well, but I really think he needs to adjust his game to playing up against men as he was just bullying kids in the WHL and just had his way and was able to play a dominant game. So let's see him do that more consistently at uh, a pro level, which he's doing already, 22 points in 23 games. That's solid. You can't ask for much more from Ridley Gregg. But I hope that Belleville can stay in this playoff hunt and he can get experience playing in Belleville's uh, playoffs. And I think maybe next year is even too soon. But by the end of next season, I wouldn't be surprised if Ridley has a role in the NHL because he plays a game that there's not a lot of young players that can stand up with him and play that physical game while also having good offensive touch. We saw that epic goal he scored in preseason in Winnipeg uh, a little while ago. So look out for Ridley Gregg as he he's a guy like Tyler Boucher. I think come playoffs, you're not going to want to go up against him seven games. When he started this year in Belleville, it wasn't his first pro experience. He had a little taste during the COVID shortened season, yeah. seven games at three points, but 
he didn't do much. He had no one one assist in his first four games this year. Six penalty minutes was minus two. Didn't really accomplish a whole lot. And then I feel like once he got those two assists against the uh, the Phantoms early on, it kind of sprung board him. And now, ever since returning from that injury, first two games probably took a little while to get his feet back under him. He had missed almost a month. No points in his first game, two games. Since then, he's clicking at over a point per game. Heck, in his last five games, he's got nine points. So he is really coming around. Again, you want to make sure that the strength isn't an issue. He's a guy who's gaining weight. I mean, Elite Prospects has him up at eight, uh, 181 now. I think when he was drafted, he was about 160. Yeah. Um, so I, I just think that with the style he plays, you don't want him to go up in the NHL and have to think he needs to change his style at all because he's not going to be able to back it up against these bigger, tougher guys yep. on the NHL blue line. So I, I don't want him to lose that peskiness, that little bit of dirty, that on-the-line play that he has that's made him so successful throughout his whole career. So I don't mind him sticking around in the AHL, like you said, point per game, and I think only getting more and more confident. Could he be a guy with vision and speed that plays with Igor at the NHL level? Those two played real well together over the last number of weeks together in uh, Belleville. I mean, part of me envisions a line of Igor, Ridley, and Tyler Boucher as a third line in the NHL. Now, maybe they're not lighting it up, scoring a lot of goals, but that's a tough trio to play up against. And all three of those guys have offensive abilities. So that could be interesting for sure. I like that. Your overall impression, I already asked you uh, before we, we got going. But now that we go through it, I think all, what really does Ottawa well here is they've got a number of different styles of players in their prospect pool. Yeah, and I think that's why maybe a lot of people hopped on the Tyler Boucher uh, negative slant being like, ah, you need to get a, a super skilled guy at number 10 overall. You can't pass on guys like Cole Sillinger. That was a guy I really liked. But when you're building a team and a franchise, there's so many different roles you want to find. And Tyler Boucher is the arguably the best prospect in his role for what he does as a physical guy that hopefully will have offensive uh, capabilities as well. So I, I stand by the pick and uh, I'm excited to see what the future has for him and some of these other players like Ridley Gregg, another great example of that. Let us know in the comments who's too high, who's too low, and who did we completely forget about who you're banging the table for? Is it Thomas Hamara, who we thought about? Not there yet. Max Gannett had some highs and lows over his last few years and the mayor, Carson Latimer, I'll get some more boots on the ground, but with his speed, I think he could make an appearance on our next list. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's an opportunity for that. And my honorable honorable mention would be Levy Merlinen. I mean, this guy's playing really well in Carpat, but like most young goalies, very inconsistent. Has some great games and some stinkers. So we'll like to see a little more consistency from him this season. We'd like to see a little more consistency from the Ottawa Senators as well, who are off until Thursday, but we'll be back tomorrow with a preview of that game because Thursday we're going to have a little bit of a later episode. Troy Mann will be on Locked On Senators. Stay tuned for all that. We also have a Send Central Citizen coming tomorrow, but for today we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.